Okay, so hi and welcome back to Dice Voyeurs. This is John with Passion Nerdly. And today we are doing a special episode. This is a post-Thanksgiving episode. We got the pups running around from all the family. And I am here today with David McFarland. Hello. And my nephew, Levi. Hi. You probably have heard us talk about Levi before on the show because he is a starting DM. And you probably have heard us mention him a couple times on different things. So... Today we are hanging out. Roxy is here, but she is currently in the kitchen. We're making homemade pizzas uh, post Thanksgiving. I guess this might be a new tradition. You know, I don't know what y'all's thoughts are on that. Homemade pizza is always good. Homemade pizza is always good. Can't blame you. All right. Well, we're not just going to be talking about pizza or Thanksgiving or any of those things, but we're here to talk about dice and dice things. Now, this is your first time on the show, so usually I toss out trivia. That's our first thing we usually do. When I was your age, Levi, and I was in school, we would actually bring dice up to school to play uh, RPGs before school got started. You know, we had so much time in the morning before school started that we would play. But our teachers got very worried that we might actually be gambling and not role-playing. You know, uh, and this, you know, this is one of those things where to them that was something that was bad. You know, different people have different takes on that about kids gambling or whatnot. But the game that they thought we were playing was a game called Craps. So uh, I don't know if you've ever heard of it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, I don't know much about gambling. Okay. Well, this game actually started off uh, and it was a game that was played. Now, we know Dice has been around since Egypt. Yeah. So dice is something that's always been around. But this game, Craps, became popular or started off during a very specific time period in history. And so that time period uh, was around a war. Do you know what war it might have been? Mm-hmm. Now, D- David, you're with, you, you've done a lot of SCA stuff, so you might know this answer. No, I don't know this one. You don't know this one. Uh, Levi, you got you to gotta guess about what war it might be? Now I really wish I paid attention in social studies class. <laughs> All right. Well, the war that the, that craps originated in was the Crusades. Ah. Oh, never heard of that. Now, the Crusades were a series of wars where uh, basically invasions where European Christian nations invaded Israel with the intent to take it back and make it into a Christian land against the Muslims. And this was many, 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 many years ago. But... The question is, why is it called craps? And this this is a big question. Uh, and here here's another little piece of trivia about it. Do y'all know why this is called craps? Nope. How about you? Oh, let us know. <laughs> well, craps was actually the term for the way the people were sitting when they were playing the game because they're all hunched over and sitting on the ground. Now, while you think that might be something bad, <laughs> you know, you might be thinking, oh, that's that's naughty. No, uh, it actually is a French word, crapaud, for frog. So they would all be sitting playing these games and look like frogs sitting around, you know, rolling dice on the ground. Or in South Louisiana, as they may say, crapé. Ah, oh, there you go. I've got oh. the six, ribbit, ribbit. <laughs> as an old family member used to sing a song, salt crapo. So yeah. Crapo. About a jump. There jump, we, frog jump. Yeah, oh, well, there you go. But yeah, no, so that's where the origin is of this game, or, you know, the craps. And so more dice trivia to throw out. Now, today we're going to be talking about something else that's also very special. I mean, obviously, having family members and doing this differently is, you know, a new thing. And so we're going to do something that's not our previous format. We're going to start off with talking about something that is not just the dice. Instead, we're going to talk about dice cups. Oh, dun dun dun! Now, dice cups—you are going to find them anywhere. There are people who make these homemade. You know, you you can go to different stores, and the companies will have—you know—people will be making these and selling them at their booths. I would not doubt these were at Renfest. That somebody somewhere out there would have something that looked like this. Etsy, eBay, Amazon—it's a very common thing. Walmart. Yeah, probably. Now, these these uh, are leather. You know, the ones that we have here today are leather dice cups. We've already got these out. There's not really any big reveal to do with this. But uh, let me get see what y'all's thoughts are. I mean, if somebody came to your game table and set that down in front of you, what's your first thought? Take it now. Mine. 
Mm-hmm. What about you, David? I mean, does this is this something that jumps out at you? Somebody sits that down at, at a table, maybe a new player you've never met before. What, what would your thoughts be if they they came to the table with that? They have come prepared. Oh yeah, you know, different people use them now. Recently, you know, Satine Phoenix on her show, uh, I think it's called Sirens or something like that. One of her rules is people need to use trays and cups because it cuts down on dice that's rolling everywhere and falling on the floor and whatnot. I know the feeling. It It's very hard and <sighs> yeah. annoying. And so I think cups have a different definite use and I kind of like these. You know, if, if, I, if I'm bringing something to a table that is dice, I, I want it to be something that just jumps out at people and they're like, oh, you know, Awesome. So the two designs that we actually have here today are from Q Workshop. And Q Workshop is a company that we're going to be doing some dice reviews on eventually. They're a relatively new company compared to, of course, Chessex. Their main principal thing that they do is dice. They have a lot of dice that are printed on and also engraved, and they're really pretty. But so dice cups, and yeah, we have one here today that is you know kind of a steampunk design. Mm-hmm. I, I like it. I like it too. Cool. And it also kind of reminds me a little of Doctor Who with all the clocks and the yeah. timey wimey more thoughts. Like the, <laughs> more like the new Doctor. I think it's like the 12. Yeah. Yeah. And the other one is a Lord of the Rings inspired design with Elvish script written around the sides and the top. Yeah. That's pretty cool. I That one. So, of course, that one is mine. My wife would not be caught dead with anything elf related. <laughs> you know, she she is a she's a dwarf lover and she likes dwarfs a lot. How dare she? <gasps> I think I, I think it's an interesting thing that you know eventually I, we will probably do a big rant on. Roxy and Amanda both think that elves are ponzi. That's why they don't like them. Yeah, and uh, that that that's okay. I'm kind of poncy myself, so <laughs> you know, whatever. <laughs> my favorite late race is elves, but I barely use them in any of my games. I really do like elves, but the elves that I like, I, I'm kind of the everybody knows. I'm the Dritz Stoward and you know, dark elf fanboy. Agreed. You know that that's that's my thing, but. I liked it, and of course, I'm a huge Tolkien fan. I, I love that design on here, and so it really, really stands out. So, and of course, yeah, we we, we do have dice to try out in it. Mm-hmm. So Yahtzee, almost. I don't know. <laughs> or liars dice, of course, the good pirate game. You need a good cup for your dice if you're going to play some liars dice. Mm. Mm, good point. And again, so these are from Q Workshop. Q Workshop. All dice tell a story. You know, it's one of those things where. This is something from Q Workshop that I definitely like. I like these, you know, uh, and it's a great way. Not only does it make a great, you know, cup, but because it's got the lid on it, it also makes a great way to transport the dice. Yes, a good way to carry them around if you only have a few dice and don't need a great big bag. Yeah, to carry exactly. Around. But other than that, I mean, as far as differences, I mean, one of them, the Elven one, it's definitely more engraved into the leather. While the you know the steampunk one it's is more painted, yeah, it's print, printed on in the, with the gold, yeah. And so this would be uh, a, a fairly substantial gauge, maybe I'll look it up and see exactly. I think it's probably around a tin tin gauge uh, leather here, and the script on the Tolkien one has been stamped in, yeah. And of course, they've all been whip stitched mm-hmm. to be held together. So I've I've at least had mine for a year or two, and it's held up pretty well. So. I mean, that, 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 that to me tells me quality. You know, if, if I'm bringing this to a game or if it's in a backpack and it stands up to, uh, you know, that, you know, rather than... I've, I've had so many dice bags that get holes in them or fall apart. This, to me, I think is a good thing. Yeah. Right. They make a great sound. Oh, yeah. No, I, that, the sound of dice is one of those things that really gets me. But I think that pretty much covers this for now. I want to thank, of course, uh, David and Levi for being on. And be sure to go and check us out at Passion Early and at Southgate Media and Nerds Domain. Thank you very much, guys. Of course, everybody, remember, show me your dice and I'll show you mine. Woo! Bye. Thank you for listening to Dice Voyeurs from Passion Nerdly, a proud part of the Nerds Domain. For more information about us, check out www.passionnerdly.com and you can follow at Passion Nerdly on Twitter and Instagram, as well as Facebook.com slash Passion Nerdly. Shirts available through tpublic.com slash nerds domain. And please check out our Patreon at patreon.com slash passion nerdly. This has been a production of the Southgate Media Group. For more podcasts like this one, head over to southgatemediagroup.com. <laughs>